All right, baby gauntlet snake type bracelet. Here I'm just finishing the forge wall, folding back the head about an inch at a time and then forge welding it to itself just to give it some mass. This is 5 16 mild steel round. I think the majority of the welding's been done. I think at this point, um, just uh, getting it back into shape, making sure there's no unwalded spots. Do a good brushing. All right, now I'm now I'm shaping the head. <clears throat> Using the ball peen in the same way, for the same uh, same effect as when you're trying to, to point the end of a piece of stock at the edge of the anvil. I found that the ball peen can actually do it pretty close, laying flat on the anvil. It does need cleaned up. We'll go to the edge of the anvil, but um, it does save a little time on the small stick. If I were to hit this on the edge, I'd be playing with it a lot. This way, uh, the majority of the shaping, rough shaping, can get done without bending this stuff. This is going to be a simple snake head, nothing, uh, nothing too exotic. We're going to go from the head uh, to the mid body, <clears throat> and that'll be an increasingly bigger taper. Actually, mid body would be the actual diameter of the rod. And then what I did was I, I had actually tapered it down quite a bit to the head. As you can see, it's quite a bit thinner. And in my opinion, we're going to call this the worm. The worm snake. I've been going pretty light with my taps on this, um, especially under a, a visible heat. Because for some reason, this steel is really soft. And it doesn't take much at all to put a divot in it. And of course, trying to round this up after tapering, the, the least amount of divots you can get, the better. Just a standard uh, 4 to 8 to 16 and then planish. Stakes getting longer too. Thank you. 
Now under a black or slightly less heat, this is where I <clears throat> try to work out any divots. Gently just kind of push everything back the way it should be. Smooth everything out. I like a hammer finish that's smooth, if you can get it. So everything's real light, tap-wise. I did not even know I was standing on my chisel. Just clean up, just standard clean up. And I think I wire wheeled that to get a, an idea of what what I'm dealing with. The uh, the bracelet's supposed to be a gauntlet. The the uh, original request, I interpreted it as a gauntlet type, all the way up the forearm, twisting. So now we're gonna make some eye punch here. I actually ended up making two because. At the end of the night, of the first night, I made the first punch, <clears throat> and starting the next morning, I couldn't find it. <laughs> I lost it, so I had to make another one. This is from my stash of 4140. It's, it's fun for making small punches. I wish it were longer, but for what I paid for it, I'm not going to complain. Those work pretty good with a, a punch holder. I think, am I wearing shorts? Yes, I am. And today it was freezing. It's uh, been a week. Well, not a week. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a week later. Did not expect the weather to change so quick. Just eyeballing it up, seeing what I need to do, I'm trying really hard to take that finish as close to finished as possible on, on everything. Eliminate the sanding and the dust and the junk in the air. But unfortunately, this is something that's got to be pretty smooth in the end. If 
You're just putting divots in it so I can handle it with a punch or with a, a handle, a holder. Now, I heard the word texture when we were discussing with the person that I was making this for. Well, I think I heard decoration, and in my mind I thought, you know, a physical, physical markings, that kind of thing. I really didn't want to do that. But you do what you gotta do. Or what you think you gotta do. The idea was just to put some X's on it. Um, I was gonna flame color them. But for reasons I'll say later, it wasn't necessary. Our little worm here. Oh, I also should say, um, that was it for the punch. Um, I didn't get the chance to film doing it. But what happened was, uh, the first eye punched fine. In fact, I, I thought I would probably have to make a, uh, a punch that had a smaller eyeball. But, um, according to the pictures online... It, it, it worked out pretty good for the first eye. The second eye, the workpiece moved on me just a tad, and I gouged the eyeball out. And when I pulled the punch out, the eyeball came rolling out of the punch. And I gotta tell you, for, for metal, I thought that was pretty gross. So I ended up taking the other eyeball out, and then just drilling down a little ways and I'll tell you later what I what I planned to do at that point for eyes rather than just leaving you know holes for eyes and I actually did it and it did work but I did it at the wrong time A lot going on in the in the just planning it as I'm going kind of up against the deadline and the problem with a bracelet like this is that there is no official sizing for something that curls up somebody's arm and that was something that I was thinking about while doing this um, I really had no no idea of how big I needed to make the coils. Now, what happened here was, if you'll notice, this this is a complete new remake, all the way up to this point. And what happened was, if you notice the neck on that. It's not near as thin. So, you know, working with the other one, I kept seeing that small neck and I kept thinking of this thing as a worm. And then, of course, the texture I put on it, I didn't want to put on it. I just did. So that, that made me unhappy. And then I found out that this was going to be both a rattlesnake and a small bracelet. That comes up a little later. But I decided I had another piece that I had started. I was working on in parallel because I wanted to try out some ideas. So I just took that piece, which is this, 
and just continued on. I'm kind of glad I did. This will neck it down, but not near as skinny as the neck on the last snake. Now this is a, the bottom die on this is, has, has radius in it. Actually three different radiuses. The top die is just a flat die. Because none of those radiuses were small enough to work with this piece. But when you throw a flat die on top, you can, you can actually use it the way you want to use it with the smaller pieces. You do have to rotate it, but you have to rotate it anyway. Even if you had top and bottom radius pieces, dies. So you can see it did, it did neck it down and it was um, not near as violent as the first time. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is where I found out. Oh, yeah, um, it's gonna be a rattlesnake And it's gonna be just a small bracelet So I had to whack some off the end of that to where I thought it would be about About the right length again. I, I didn't have any data to go by so just guessing Quite a bit shorter Just drawing down what's really going to be the rattle. It will be, it will end up at the end of this more a, a conical taper, but after that, it will be kind of an oval. I think it looks like I'm rounding it back up. It's taking care of a little blending here. Not sure where I went. Remember, it's been a week. This uh, this was a hard video to edit because there were 21, 21 clips I had to stitch together, and then some of them were actually out of order on the cam. Don't I don't know what would have caused that. I don't know if, if every week it resets the numbering or what. That wouldn't have done it though. It didn't take a week to do this. It's like a two day project. Two partial days, anyway. I don't know if anyone out there listens to uh, music or podcasts when they're working. I tend to listen to podcasts.
use your whole anvil. Remember you have a nice long flat surface on it. Use it. I'm going to have to reshape my hold down too. I, I don't know. Or make one that for uh, smaller, smaller thicknesses. This one works well up to about four inches, but then it, it stops down at maybe what, what is that? Five eighths or, or maybe a half. You gotta, you gotta really put something in it, but if you push down on it, it's fine. You can't, you can't get something for nothing. I mean, if, uh, <clears throat> if instead of my hardy hole, I had a nice three or four inch deep hole then you can get away with that workbenches uh, the, the whole idea of a hold down really came from workbenches and I I don't know but I think I saw a workbench with tubes in it for that purpose and of course my anvil tail it's only uh, about two inches thick So those things only have a working range of, of X and Y. Stay within those limits and you're fine. I know I got to thinking though. Do I really need something that I can hold down something five inches high? Or, or why not just make a, a dedicated one for something that high? I mean, what would what would I be holding down? I don't know. So the tail was just simple cross hatch. Cross, or, no, it wouldn't be cross hatch. Um, a bunch of horizontal lines going across, the, and then one right down the middle, and then after that point, I went back and I tapped down the surface just a little bit. kind of, I didn't want it flat, but at the same time, um, I wanted to open up the, the lines at the edges. So this would be the long vertical line, just to kind of make that rattle, all the little sections of a rattle. And by the way, this is the same hold down that that uh, slipped when I was gouging the eyes. I didn't have a piece under it like that. I should have had an even bigger piece. I believe that's mild steel. I'm not sure, but I think it is. I made one about three years ago out of spring coil spring but i really wanted a chisel and a uh, something else i don't remember what what <clears throat> so i ended up cutting it up and making that chisel right there i think is that that blue one yeah and that has been the nicest chisel hot cold and in three years, I just recently redressed the edge on it. It's, it's been a good, good performer. I would really like to know what piece of coil I got that piece from. I've got a couple pieces that are the same and, and they're both cut. You can never tell what batch, what day something was made on. It could have a slight different operating characteristics. So 
So now at this point, it looks like I'm gearing up to wrap a little bit of copper, scrap copper I got, around the rattle and plate it on to that. The problem is if you do that, be careful brushing because I essentially brushed 90% of it off. You'll see it come flying off when I bring it out of the fire. Um, it, it did stay on. In fact, underneath, I don't think I brushed it as well underneath, but underneath, it's obvious. And it's a nice color, too. It's it, uh, Depending on how the sun hits it. And, of course, what I wanted to do was copper plate it and then flame color it. And, I, you know, I still may do that again. Even though I'm finished, I don't know. I have one day to play with it before it's due. I just made a bunch of leaf key rings and I copper plated them and you can really get some nice colors out of that. Just the leaf itself. I didn't bother with the stem. With some contrast. I don't think this camera would pick it up anyway. It looks more brassy than coppery. And of course I can never find my material. Close your eyes or you get seasick. Yeah, that, when tapping it down after making those cuts, you kind of open them up just a hair. Whoa. Dizzy. I would edit this out, but <clears throat> it's probably the, the closest close-up you're going to get of it. Besides that, I'm not a professional film filmmaker. <laughs> you still can't find it. <laughs> There's some of the copper color coming through. It's real slight. It's still there. It shows it shows up well. It's just not as strong as it could be. Now this is where I did all my guessing. I had no idea how big to make the coils, how far apart. Like I said, if you if you look at bracelets like this, you got to be careful because most of them are plastic. So obviously, you can bend plastic pretty easily if you know you can make it fit. But I haven't seen too many like what I'm gonna, what I have in mind. It's a problem. Now there are a lot of them that would sort of, uh, um, I don't know how to describe it, have a single or double loop, both the same size, in the very middle, and then from there, both ends bent 90 degrees, going both up and down the arm. That's that's usually what you see. And I think that's what you saw maybe in Egyptian times. I don't know. But that would that would make it easy to put on and take off. But it just didn't have the same zing as something coiling up your arm. And of course, being made out of steel, it's 
going to be harder to manipulate. Whereas if it were made out of copper or, or thin bronze or something, it might have some flex to it. It might be easier to put on and take off. But again, where's the fun in that? Where's the, the challenge? You coil up this steel, throw it on your arm, and I hope it fits. I did do it, and not really a test fitting, but a, a test measurement of the person's arm. Um, but those numbers went towards the bigger version. And since this was supposed to be a much smaller version, I have no idea why. I did not even notice that mallet smoking, like burning. I have no idea why. Why I let that happen. All right. Now for the fun part. Obviously, it's cooled off and brass brushed up and. On there, just grease it up. Get some of that bacon fat. Slather it on. Actually, there is a trick to it, but I, I keep forgetting what it is. Of course, my arms are a little bigger than the person that's for, so take that into account. I couldn't resist. Could not resist. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. Fits like a glove. And that little sharp tail there could come in handy for personal defense. Cute little snake on top. Oh, yeah. A winner. Yeah, we just brass brushed it up a little bit. Just kind of give that gold back. Of course, I took the copper color away, but that could be fixed. It's very smooth and velvety. I waxed it about four times. Thanks for watching.